What's up guys, Mike Builds here. I think today I'm gonna finally build me a pack out of these. I bought these probably about a year ago to build a power pack for a buddy of mine, but he backed out of the project. So I ended up buying these cells from him and I'm gonna try to use these to make a 12 volt battery. I have a 100 amp Dally BMS here. Now the only issue is when I bought these cells, somehow I lost the nuts. Like I don't know if they didn't come on the cells and I never noticed or I misplaced them, but I cannot for the life of me find them and I can't find any other internet. This is a stainless post, this is an aluminum post, so you have to have the matching nuts. So instead of going through all the trouble to try to find them, I think I'm gonna try to just take a hose clamp and maybe uh, wrap a piece of this four gauge wire. We're gonna wrap it around the post and then clamp it on there. And I'm gonna do that for all of them, series parallel, and then we're gonna do a max load test. We're gonna try to pull close to 100 amps and we're gonna use a thermal camera to check and see if the connections are actually gonna work or not. I don't know if this is gonna work. Maybe this is a dumb idea, but I'm gonna work with what I got because I do not have the nuts and I couldn't find them anywhere on the internet and I'm too lazy to figure out the thread pitch and try to find a stainless and aluminum nut set. And I just wanna try this out. I already have all this stuff. I got tons of copper lugs, tons of little hose clamps and a bunch of this wire. So I'm gonna do parallel and then we're gonna have a lug so we're going to have one, two, three, four lugs, five, six, seven, eight on that side. And then we're going to series them up, put the BMS on, like I said, charge it, and then do some testing on it. All right, guys, we got this pretty much buttoned up. I got the batteries taped together, put a little bit of double-sided tape between these little cell holders. These are 3D printed. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're kind of ugly. Um, what do you guys think? You think it's a terrible idea? You think it's stupid? Do you think it's not bad considering the situation that I don't have nuts? I don't know. Either way, we're going to test it. All I have to do now is connect the BMS. Um, I need to solder. I'm probably going to put a little nick in here and solder the balance harness for the BMS. And then that's it. We're going to put a lug, a discharge lug there, and then connect an Anderson connector right here as our discharge. And we're going to kind of maybe... Probably should put some tape on the ends to make sure we don't short circuit nothing. But that's going to be it. So this will be a 100 amp discharge battery. 110 amp hours times 12.8 is your watt hours. So not too bad. And then I'll build some sort of box and enclosure. And then we'll try a way to incorporate it in our other setup. My original goal with these cells was to try to connect them to my other little power station over there. But like I said, since I lost the nuts, it would be kind of a pain. And maybe one day we will. You know, we can always take all this back apart, take all that apart and integrate it. But for right now, we're just going to make this its own battery. I have a, 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 a spare BMS, so might as well just use it. But yeah, so that's where we're at with that. So I'm going to call it quits for tonight. And tomorrow we're going to get the BMS mounted, kind of maybe tape some of this stuff up, make it a little bit more safe. And then we're going to charge it. And then we're going to do a discharge test and monitor the temperature of all the posts with a thermal camera and kind of make sure we don't have any hot spots. Because if you have a, a really crappy connection and then a lot of resistance, it'll show up when you start putting a load on it. So, And then obviously over time, we're going to make sure that we don't get any weird corrosion on this or nothing. And when this battery is in service, I have this in parallel with a bunch of other batteries. So I don't expect to see a ton of current coming out of it. I think collectively, they all put in, you know, to kind of share the load. So haven't figured out how I'm quite going to do that yet. But one day I do want to integrate all my batteries to be able to, you know, power every, everything I want pretty much. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. All righty, guys, small update on our big lithium iron phosphate cylindrical cells. As you can see, these look like garbage, but that's fine. We have the battery charging. We have the BMS connected. I verified with the Bluetooth on the phone that everything's good. The cells are almost perfectly balanced. I just got to wait for them to all hit uh, 3.65 volts per cell. Once that happens, I'm going to perform a discharge test, and I'm going to be able to test to see if these connections are any good or not. So basically, my plan is to connect this to a you know, five to 800, maybe a thousand watt load. And we're going to monitor all these with a temp gun and we're going to, or I'm sorry, an infrared camera to see if any of them are getting really hot, not an infrared camera, a thermal camera. And that's it. I'm going to make sure nothing's getting crazy hot. When this thing's actually put into service, it's going to be put in parallel with the rest of my 12 volt batteries. So I doubt a ton of current's going to come out of this battery specifically. However, just to test to see if this even works, I want to put a heavy load on it, pull a lot of amps out of it, you know, 80, hundred amps, and really see you know what gets hot what doesn't you know i think the cells are rated at at least one c in their 55 amp hours cell so each cell should be able to reliably put out 55 amps um and I have two in parallel so that's 110 but anyways that's it we're gonna let this thing charge i'm using this 10 amp charger this is the charger i use to charge the smaller packs if you're curious and then when they're all connected to the big system over there so i have a lot of crap um, I just use the Sun Gold inverter. Come on, focus. I use the Sun Gold inverters built in charger, which can charge up to like 
I don't know, 40 amps or something. So something crazy like that. But anyways, we're gonna use a little 10 amp charger, let this thing charge all the way up. And we're gonna go from there and do a little bit of testing. All right, boys, we have our new battery connected to the battery dyno. That's what I'm gonna call this. So as you can see by the meter, we're pulling 50 amps, 51 amps, 620 watts. So yeah, the voltage is sagging pretty hard to 12 volts. Um, this battery's not fully charged, so what we need to do is do a full charge cycle on this first, do a capacity test, see how many amp hours we get out of the pack, fully charge it, and then see what our voltage zag is. Because a lot of the, a lot of the time I'm always interested too is how low the voltage goes based on a load, you know, because if we're only pulling 50 amps, we're already seeing 12 volts, you know, we put another more load on this, I guess you could say, it would definitely sag below 12, and you don't want that, you know, the inverters don't like it, and all that good stuff. But anyways, just for now, we're really just doing a kind of a pre preliminary test to see if the posts get hot, because I'm worried with this setup that we're going to create a high resistance point, you know, with the way we connected it, because it's really janky. So I have my thermal camera here. And it's not a very good thermal camera, so you're not going to be able to see a lot. Let's see here. Okay, you can kind of see the hottest point right now is actually the discharge wires. But the connections between the cells are actually staying pretty cool. So you can see the red is from the negative wire. Anyways, I know my thermal camera is kind of shitty, but you know, you get the gist of it. Let me turn the light off and see if it's easier to see. Moving back up a little bit. So yeah, the glowing red part is just the negative cable. So all these are staying relatively cool. And then actually to the touch, yeah, none of these are even warm. So if we had a really, really crappy, like this is a little bit warm actually, but these are all stone cold. That's a little warm. Well, that's not even warm, honestly. But, but the terminals is what I worry about. If you had a high resistance connection, it would get really hot. Let's check this side. So. Yeah, these all feel okay. So like I said, 50 amp load, not bad. This is not going to see 50 amps when I put it in service, but it's good to know. I think what I need to do now is do a full charge recharge cycle on this, get all the cells balanced up, and do a capacity test and kind of see where everything sits. So I'm going to stop the test for now. We're going to get this thing fully charged, and we're going to do a capacity test and see how many amp hours we get out of the battery. Hey, guys. So we got our... Hey, guys. We got a... We have our cylindrical cells pretty much fully charged, about to hit high voltage cutoff on the BMS. So there they are there, very ugly, very crappy connections, but that's fine. I had to use a halogen light bulb to kind of bleed off some of the um, voltage from the higher cells because I didn't top balance these. Top balance your cells because it's a pain to do it after the fact. These little bleeder balancers built into these BMSs are not very good if the voltage deviation is too much. But anyways, enough of that. So now we're going to take this... With this battery connected, I'm going to zero out our current meter. Then we're going to connect the 10 amp charger to the main pack, which is all this. And we're going to do a full capacity discharge test, just like we did on the blue cells. And we're going to see how many amp hours we get. I hope to get, these are rated at 55 amp hours each. There's two in parallel, so we should get 110. So if I get at least 100, I'll be happy. Hopefully we get close to 110 because they're, they should be brand new cells. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get this all set up for the test. Okay, so as you can see, we have 110 amp hours, 100%. We reset the amp hour counter to zero, you know, 14.3 volts hot off the charger. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and get it all hooked up, and we're going to let this thing run. And there it is. There's our base load for the test, 200 watts-ish, 15 amps on the DC side. That should be about what, um... Okay, so that's going to be our load for the test, 200 watts. Um, as you can see... 15 amps on the DC side, and that's it. I'm just gonna let this run until these completely shut off, and then we're gonna see what number we have. So from there, goes to the inverter, goes to our charger, and then into the battery. There is some efficiency loss doing it like this because we're going from 12 volts to 12 volts. I could use uh, this charger right here and gain a little more efficiency, but we're not going after full efficiency here. We're going after a test. So we're just gonna let this run until it dies, and we're gonna see what we get. Hey guys, I'm back with the discharge test is finally complete. And as you can see, we used 109.68 amp hours out of 110. So we only had 0.3 left, but the BMS just connected. So this battery rate right at 110 gave us 109. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So yeah, exactly how it should be. So I guess now that that's kind of over, I'm just going to go ahead and recharge this and then put it back connected with all these. And that's going to be it for this battery for now. So, yeah, I'm really happy with this battery. It might be ugly, but it pulled full capacity, and it'll be a good addition, and we're just going to keep using it. 
and maybe in the future we'll revisit it to try to make those connections a little bit better. I don't recommend you doing this. This is not recommended, but this is what I'm doing because I have no choice. Otherwise, I can't use these cells. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.